Hello, um, going about to start. We are on time already. Um, okay, so I'm Marcelo Amaral from IBM Research Tokyo, and I'm going to present today uh, this talk about uh, measuring the energy consumption of applications on the cloud. I'm going to introduce the, our open source solution that it's uh, it's been recently. Uh, become a CNCF sandbox project. Um, just a very quick overview, start with motivation, going into details about the Kepler, that's the open source project, uh, describe the architecture and all, how everything works. Um, then I have an example, uh, running an AI workload and showing the energy consumption and the, the, the workload will be the ML perf. Okay, so the motivations is, I think mo probably many people have already been looking at this, uh, you know, motivations is the climate change, it's, be it's becoming something important um, for nowadays. We have, you know, this, all the chain that impacts, which is the human activity, using more energy, also, uh, you know, all the CO2 that it's is produced by industry and end users. It's increasing the greenhouse gas emissions, which actually impacts the global warming. And in the end, it impacts the environment, but also impacts the economy. And it's becoming something important to be discussed and improved. So there are some ways to mitigate that. Um, for example, reduce the, the green gas uh, house emissions uh, by minimizing uh, productions, but also in, uh, in, uh, doing some uh, uh, actions to uh, minimize the, uh, the energy consumption and emissions. So also there is like some uh, uh, importance to do some preparations for the companies and minimize also the risk about that. So uh, um, IBM has done some, some uh, all the years do a research survey to understand what the requirements of the clients. And given that there is now some necessity that comes from governments and also clients, uh, you know, the, from the surveys from the previous years, sustainability has become something even more important. So, for example, in 2023, 40% of the G20 uh, 2000, uh, you know, group, the companies that are inside this group, is saying that sustainability is something important. Also, 6% uh, of this, the, the companies on this group is saying that they want to implement sustainability, uh, you know, uh, actions in their company. And still like part of the motivation, we have like, uh, when it's well known that the, uh, the data that it's being transferred in the internet, it's growing. So all, all the computation power, it's also growing for that, from the end users and also in the companies. Also, uh, nowadays we can see a uh, big increase on more energy, compu you know, computation power hungry application, which means also impacts on the energy consumption, like AI workloads, because they are very intensive. And we can see that something that it's important to know is, you know, that the, the energy scaling, it's reaching the limit, which means uh, the scaling that was, uh, for those ones that are not too familiar with the energy scaling, say, the transi smaller transistors consumes less energy, but we are reaching like, uh, you know, this, the, the plateau where we can go, so the energy consumption will not decrease for the next years with the current architecture that we have. So it's we, the energy is not become a bottleneck to scale, but also something important to analyze. So given that recently, especially in the European Union, some governments are, uh, you know, pushing for more efficient, energy efficient uh, applications. So there is some requirements, again, especially here in European Union, saying that uh, companies that are using AI workloads, they should report their energy consumption. So 
given that it's important to measure that so what's how we, we can expose you know create the observability of the energy consumption of applications and this talk is about that so here's the problem so how we measure energy consumption per containers in the cloud so how much these applications are consuming really consuming there especially if we have a mix of applications running on the same node how we partition this uh, power consumption across the applications and can we give this a uh, detail uh, aggregate the energy consumption per applications up to the users so here where we can uh, the kepler steps in so kepler is open source project it's created to measure the energy consumption of process that we can aggregate later to other levels container level pod levels jobs and then the user and i'm going to detail more about that so kepler basically has recently become the cncf sandbox project so it's one of the official then kubernetes projects to energy to measure energy consumption and there are many companies involved to that red hat ibm intel and other other companies as well and it provides power models for bare metal nodes and power models for vms i'm going to detail better what i mean for that later and so it's report the process container and pod energy consumption for the entire node and also when it's possible break down for different resource cpu dram and gpu when it's available uh, and we support for different architecture uh, x86 and s390x and uh, it's open source project so we envision to support for more architectures given the contribution for other companies as well it has low overhead uh, it's written to to has low as low overhead as possible we also use some special tool that is called ebpf for those that are not familiar with BPF, this is basically some, we can do some kernel extension in the kernel uh, without need to recompile the, the kernel. So it's very flexible and very lightweight to collect metrics. So we are using that. And for the VM power models, where there is no available real-time power metrics from the node, we need to use uh, estimation. So we use regression to create the power models here is the architecture the Kepler architecture okay so I was was mentioning we use the BPF to collect harder counters CPU time and also uh, network uh, throughput you know with the software RQ metrics um, we create power models for BM bare metal and VMs we can see here on the bottom part that the node energy consumption when Kepler is uh, running, it can collect directly to the bare metal using available APIs for real-time power metrics. When it's not available, we need to use the uh, trained power model that will be pre-trained uh, with, uh, with data uh, and we do regression to uh, create the, estimate the power curve, the power curve consumption for the node. Um, we collect metrics, then we use the metrics for per process, the total energy consumption of the node, or or if we break down for a resource for a given resource, and then by using a power model that we call the ratio, we calculate the energy consumption of containers. What I mean about the ratio is just the ratio. This, for example, the CPU utilization of a process divided by the system utilization. So this ratio multiplied by the total, the energy consumption of the resource that we are analyzing out of the node uh, gives the energy consumption of the process. This is very simple way, say, if a process is consuming 10% of the CPU utilization, 10% of the energy consumption of the CPU is related to this process, as simple as that. And, and then we have this other component that is called model server when we are going to do the uh, create the power model for uh, with regression for environments that doesn't have access to real-time power metrics so I just want to show here 
examples of different uh, deployment, different architecture. So, as I was mentioned, so we can have the first one is when we are running the bare metal, okay? It's the best scenario. Uh, we have access to the power matrix and then we can accurately calculate the energy consumption of all the process and containers and so on. There is another scenario that uh, currently it's what's available on public clouds where we have uh, people are using VMs and no parameter is exposed to the VM. So in this case, we, use, we need to use a pre-trained power model. Of course, it has limitations when we are doing estimation. And there is a third scenario, which we envision that in the future, especially because now governments and companies are requiring a more accurate energy uh, 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 consumption uh, measurement from, from, the, uh, from the infrastructure perspective. Uh, we'll, maybe in the future, you know, cloud, cloud, cloud providers can use Kepler or something similar to expose this and will be very good you know when once we reach that point which means we can run kepler on the bare metal node in the cloud control plane calculate the energy consumption per vm and expose this matrix for each vm it's not exposed node matrix that can be some security issue it's exposed already you know div divided uh, energy consumption per VM. So VM can only know its own energy consumption, it's not leaking information of other users. And by doing that, we can then take this metrics inside uh, the Kubernetes deployment on top of VMs and accurately calculate that. Um, just to, you know, to make like a, a, why this is also important, What's the limitation of power model? There are some limitations of power model, not to cover everything here, we can talk offline. We are also uh, writing a blog, a post in CNCF blog to uh, describe all the limitations that are there because uh, it, f everything needs to be very transparent. People need to understand what they are using. Isn't it? So, but just to quick, quick comment here is the idle power, okay? So we can consider this, the, these two uh, definitions. The idle power when the machine is not, is not uh, the energy consumption on the machine without uh, considering any load. If there is nothing running the machine, it has some constant idle power. And then the dynamic one, that it's the increase on the energy consumption, giving a load, a CPU load, memory, any, any resource. The idle power for a fair division for that, and especially for the green, green gas protocol uh, that's defined, the idle power should be divided across all the VMs, all the process, based on their size. But some related words divide the idle power just evenly across different VMs, okay? Regardless of this approach, the idle power is something that needs to be divided across uh, it's not related to resource utilization. It's something constant that needs to be divided. If we are on the public cloud, inside one VM, there is no way to know how many VMs are running on the node. So it's impossible to divide the idle power. So we can expose the dynamic power, but the idle power on public cloud, eh, we cannot do that because we don't have information. It's misinformation. But in the future, if the cloud provider itself the, uh, expose this information, then we can accurately report everything. Okay? So that's one of the motivations. And again, I'm saying public cloud, but in private cloud, in private deployment, we can go for the uh, third architecture and deploy that. Okay, so again, so in public cloud, in public cloud, we, again, as I mentioned, we don't have access to real-time power metrics from CPU or DRAM, things like that, but typically the GPUs are completely passed through, it's exposed. So the GPU, we can get the energy consumption from the driver and, and, and do uh, estimation, okay, for per process. We, we have power models for GPUs. We get the energy consumption and also the GPU utilization per process. For training use case, normally a GPU is not shared, but there are 
some use cases, especially for inference, new works that since inference workloads are not utilizing 100% of the GPUs, it's possible to partition the GPU uh, and, and then run different process. And by use, checking the utilization of different GPU, Kepler, we can uh, also split the power consumption of the GPU across different process. Um, which it's becoming like when we use MIG uh, or MLPass. Uh, uh, tools to um, partition the GPU, to share the GPU, sorry. Um, yeah, so we're going to use power estimation. This is just to show here more or less, you know, uh, in a high level view, w w the breakdown of the energy consumption, what's the CPU memory, well, the GPU normally is the more power hungry uh, resource, and we has also has other components. Um, in x86, we can get the energy consumption from the CPU and DRAM, and also we get the energy consumption of the entire node from the sensors in the motherboard. And by doing that, we can get the energy consumptions of the entire node and also per component. That's what we are doing, Kepler. Okay, just to for the ones that are not familiar with MLPerf, MLPerf is a benchmark to that it's created to do uh, to analyze machine learning workloads especially we can have like a, um, uh, for training and uh, for inference uh, different benchmarks so this is a presentation i'm going to show more information about the inference but uh, the mlperf also has so uh, the industry and research uh, uh, entities are also using mlperf it's become some de facto benchmark to to make comparisons. Okay, so MLPerf, it's interestingly has different uh, workload generation, so it can generate in different uh, the load in different partners. That is the offline, which is just a batch, send everything to the GPU and make it processing. Single stream, it's a kind of a queue model, and the server. Uh, is just change the how the data is being uh, sent. For example, it's using a Poisson distribution, and the mood stream scenario that it, as the name say, it's mood stream. It's kind of more multiplexing thing that it requests that comes from different source, like uh, you know, um, um, I think uh, camera driving. I put an example here, so that has source from different uh, place. Um, basically, if, if we are thinking about, for example, nowadays ChatGPT or IBM Watson X, that's it's a system that's receiving inference requests. It's more the server uh, use case here. Okay. So, running Kepler with MLPerf. So, for everyone that wants to try, uh, you can deploy Kepler using the Helm charts. Um, it's public available on our documentation, but it's it's as easy as run, you know, everyone that's familiar with Helm, just run that, then, you know, include the Helm chart and then install Kepler. Uh, uh, optionally, it's also possible to just do a Git clone for our repository and uh, create the manifest with a make command manifest and then deploy it. So, both approaches are fine. We also have an operator to uh, help to deploy Kepler. We have the three different approaches. And then Kepler expose metrics. So the power consumption metrics will be the container. It's the lower one. It will be degraded of everything. But we can, as I mentioned, break, break down for different components. You can have uh, only the GPU, DRAM, package, energy consumption for that. And then we enable the, the observability to users. Okay, so users can be aware of their energy consumption. And then also there are some side projects in Kepler to apply optimization for a scheduling perspective. For example, when we do consolidation, we try to beam pack and to put all the workloads in the same node. 
it means the it's more energy efficient because the power curve is different when you have more more uh, utilization on the node the energy consumption the uh, it's not completely linear isn't it so it's a little bit less energy consumption with more load it means as much as we try to maximize the load on the nodes we uh, become more energy efficient so we can there are some rooms to improvement with through scheduling other approaches are changing the CPU frequency. We have other projects for that. But Kepler itself, the main Kepler project, it's for observability. Okay, so just very high level uh, way to deploy MLPerf. So I didn't see like uh, too many tutorials about that. Uh, that's why I'm putting here. So it might be interesting for people. So if you are in the Kubernetes, you create a persistent volume store, uh, storage claim there. And then, so that we can deploy a perf on that, and using this PVC later, we can just run workloads. Because why you need that? Just just for efficiency. Because this uh, MLPerf is very heavy. It's especially when it downloads the data. So it, I don't remember now, but it's many giga, gigabytes. So if you want to run it many times, you just have a cache for that and then you run so and here's just an example to fill the the the, the volume okay so uh, we can just run a simple job that downloads the mlperf and then if you go for example for inference and BERT for the BERT example uh, mlperf has this documentation you just do make setup and it downloads everything so it's everything is very automated very easy to do once you have this uh, it will fill the, the volume and then we can use that to run work so here is an example actually to run mlperf uh, we have the pv the persistent volume that we filled before as i showed and here we can create a job requesting a gpu and when we run mlperf with gpu we need to expose the environment variable use gpu yes and then we can just run so mlperf has different backend for example, PyTorch, TensorFlow, Onyx, um, depends on the workload, they have different performance. We have done tests for that. It's very workload dependent, uh, the performance for different runtimes, so people need to test that. And that's why uh, we, it's good to do benchmarking here, okay? And, and then we just run and, then, and it will compute. So there are more parameters in, in the MLPerf, so please, who is interested and in, uh, not a, uh, completely aware of that, check the MLPerf documentation. Here's just an example. So in Kepler, we have Grafana dashboard, okay? So after running, this is an experiment that we were changing the CPU frequency, change batch size, things like that, to, to see what's the impact in the, in the energy consumption. I'm not going to go to, it's not the, the goal of the application, going in a lot of details on that, it's just to show in high level view how things goes. And, and then Kepler has, as I mentioned, a Grafana dashboard. And it's exporting the energy consumption, especially the GPU energy consumption that we are showing here. And then for different executions. So you can check, users can be more aware of which parameters they change, what's the impact in the energy consumption. Uh, not only for performance, that normally it's uh, um, the goal. Uh, just a very... Um, uh, quick introduction here about uh, the measurements of Kepler. So, if we get the, the measurements from the NVIDIA DCGM and then we get the aggregated energy consumption, sorry, power consumption from Kepler uh, for different systems running on bare metal, running on top of VMs, we see that the the, the ex exported values are very, very similar, very close. So just to show that we are reporting the right metrics. Um, we have um, done also other kind of tests to check the, the, the occurrence of power modules using different metrics. Uh, if we use on CPU, ti CPU, uh, um, CPU time, or when we have access to hardware counters, to the VMs, what's the impact in the occurrence? Um, again, so uh, 
this is just a very high level overview. Uh, when we are creating power models, we also use different um, uh, regression algorithms and check which one has better uh, occurrence. And this is the power model that will be actually exposed to the users and be used. So um, there are this, it's part of a, a research paper in the was published this year in the IEEE cloud. So if someone wants to get more information about this analysis, it's possible to check in more details the paper. Okay, so we have actually five minutes for uh, questions now. I think I finish on time here. Yeah. Any question? Do you know is there any any effort any in the public uh, cloud Kubernetes offerings? Do you know is there any activity to expose similar type capability within the public clouds? Yeah. So uh, right now, as I mentioned, public cloud, we need to use this pre-trained power models. Uh, for example, if you go for Amazon, Amazon has the VMs there, but it's also possible to allocate the bare metal. So we need to allocate the bare metal, create the power model. Uh, there are some, uh, we are discussing with the community to try to do this, uh, you know, for m more machines to, be, to make available more power models. And once we have this uh, pre-trained power models, People can use these power models inside the VM. So in the VM, it's possible to see the CPU model. So it's exposed that. Once we know the CPU model, it, we can just download the power model created for this kind of machine and, and use that. But as I mentioned to you, so power model has some limitations. For example, the idle power. Uh, but we see that in the future, especially if clients put more pressure to cloud providers that they want this information, uh, cloud providers might uh, expose that. Any other question? Okay. Thank you very much for your attention.